Welcome to Cornwall, a county with no shortage of native species. All manner of creatures jostle for space on miles of Sunkiss coastline. And in the higher moorland areas, kestrels, pipits and starlings rule the skies. But many years ago, numerous moor creatures called Cornwall home. And with biodiversity at an all-time low, now may be the perfect time to reintroduce Cornwall's lost species. Now reintroduction of lost or threatened animals is nothing new. In fact, it's happening across the country in growing numbers. But what creatures may we start to see on our doorstep? And what effect will this have on the already native species? I set out to investigate. To find out, I first headed to Derek Gow's farm in rural Devon. A haven for rare species, the staff at Coombshead are raising and caring for many of Britain's lost creatures and distributing them to rewilding projects across the county. As project manager Tay explains. He brought in um, various species as proxies for the sort of things that would have been here after the Ice Age. So they're all bred here in the hopes that they will be released uh, in the not too distant future. We have the beavers, which um, we've got some in enclosures, some which are a bit more wild um, and they've done a fantastic job in the woodlands up at Coombs Head. We have the wild boar which turf things up, they expose bare ground um, for seeds to germinate. Uh, at the moment there's a big project looking into where to release wild cats in England and Wales and once that's going then we, we've got the, the stock in so we can start to release them um, hopefully not too, not too far in the future. And then the water voles, um, that's been the longest running of the, the reintroduction part of the job. So the water voles are trapped in areas that are going to be developed and they come here just to sort of stay and sometimes we breed them here and then we release them in areas where they maybe have gone missing or they need bolstering in their population numbers. With this in mind, I dive deeper into the heart of Cornwall's moorland to catch up with conservationist Merlin and discover what species he believes should be sharing our beautiful county. So of all the many species that we've lost from the UK and there's a long list of things that usually humans have killed, the beaver is it's the keystone. It's one of the most important creatures that we can have in these islands. There is no such thing as a healthy river anywhere in Europe if it doesn't have beavers on it. Uh, down here in Cornwall we have beavers wild on the Tamar, the Seaton, the Fowl, the Camel. So um, it won't be long before there are beavers wild on every river in Cornwall. I would love to release our beavers and have them outside of an enclosure and hopefully this year Natural England will grow the courage to allow landowners and farmers to do that. The riverine valleys like this, all the water tends to flow quite quickly so you get very few areas of still water. When beavers are introduced they've built numerous dams up and down this river and when they do that you get areas of still water. In still water you get algal growth and when you get algal growth you get insect life feeding off that algae and that insect life creates the bedrock for every other species to have a food type. So fish, reptiles, amphibians, bird life and small mammals, all of them can feed off all of the animals that come to, uh, to feed on those insects. So you get this huge explosion in biodiversity. You not only get animals returning that we haven't seen before, things like uh, species of newt, species of frog, but you also get more of the species that are already there and they become healthier. The reintroduction of beavers has really improved things for amphibians and for um, sort of wetland bird species, uh, aquatic invertebrates, everything really. It's unprecedented the, the benefits that they bring to uh, wetland areas without too many conflicts and easily remedied conflicts. I think the beavers have definitely paved the way for further reintroduction projects. I absolutely believe that anything that was here 5,000 years ago that isn't here now because of human interaction should be here and it has a place within the ecosystem. Any reintroduction of a, a currently absent native species to the United Kingdom needs to be done very carefully because within any ecosystem every species will have predators that apply uh, pressure to those species numbers, um, a prey or a food species that will also create pressures when there's absence of that food and competitors that sit either side of that species. So when anything's being reintroduced, you always have to think, have we got the predators, the competitors and the prey in place? And if we haven't, we have to have a management plan. It's hoped that the reintroduction of things like the wild cat will 
provide some top-down um, sort of predator interactions so uh, we'll start to see things improving in areas where we reintroduce things like that and with the main the sort of end goal would be to bring back the links these sites are sort of suitable for links and they could do a really good job and keep the sort of deer moving around the landscape um, and allow the trees to sort of start to um, recover so hopefully in the next 20 years we'll see lynx back somewhere in the UK. Of course large predators near our towns and cities may not be to everyone's liking but in the short term there's hope for many other reintroduction projects. As of the spring of 2022 Cornwall Council is considering propositions to legally reintroduce the beaver, the pine marten, the water vole, the wild boar and the wildcat to our woods and waterways. These animals were driven out by human greed and interference and although care will be needed to balance the reintroduction, they all belong here, in the West Country.